Hello, everyone. Welcome to Faith and Friends. We're glad to spend the next 30 minutes with you. May is here. Flowers are blooming. The sun is shining. The eternal optimism. <laughs> Spring is here. Cherry blossoms are everywhere around other parts of the country. <laughs> yeah. May is national. a lot of flowering things here. The cherry blossoms? Japan. You, know, you have I mean, cherry blossoms, take some pictures. We, we do have that tree out in the parking lot here at the station that when it blooms in spring, it does have a mm. wonderful yes. smell and just really makes it's you two days realize, of yeah. the year that it's blooming. As you walk <laughs> in the front entrance, it is wonderful. And another great smell, May is National Barbecue Month. It's oh, also yeah. National Salad Month, which isn't as good a smell unless you have... <laughs> it's a good precursor. Good dressing. A lot of strong blue cheese wafting up your way. You would your way. have a lot of... Blue cheese dressing. I do love blue cheese. It's mostly, for him, it's mostly a blue cheese meal with a little bit of salad. So, so. <laughs> sunflower seeds, fine. throw them through those. Fine, yeah. Cheese as well. Yeah. It's also National Hamburger Month, but it's also the month we remember those who lost their lives serving our country. Of course, Memorial Day, the last Monday in May. And this week, our food segment is focusing on healthy and tasty ways to commemorate Memorial Day for your backyard barbecues. I don't. I don't know what that means, but I'm excited, Zach. <laughs> well, I am excited, too. It's going to be a lot of fun today. That's a surprise for a little bit later. Also on today's show, we take you to a very special event that took place recently in Putnam County, the first daddy-daughter date night. Andy, or and Andy, you were there along with so Jennifer you, and I was. <laughs> You'll likely look at kitchen utensils differently after you meet a special artist from New Knoxville whose art medium includes forks and knives. I also had the chance to see that. Very unique. But first, no utensils needed to feast on our main meal of the day. Mark, let's take a look at some scripture. Absolutely. Let's take a look at Psalms 127, verses 3 through 5. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. Well, our Faith and Friends show starts out focusing specially on children and fathers, more specifically, fathers and daughters. It was the first event of its kind in Putnam County last month, and organizers say God did more than they could have hoped or planned. Andy takes us to the daddy-daughter date night at the Fogel Center in Lipsick. A simple rose, a keepsake picture, one-of-a-kind jewelry, hors d'oeuvres, a chocolate fountain. These were just a few of the elements planned for the first daddy-daughter date night in Putnam County. Sponsored by the Lipsick Ministerial Association, it was an exquisite night designed to show daughters just how special they are and to encourage dads, uncles, grandpas, or special mentors to teach these important girls the value of being treated as a young lady. You know, you, you wonder, are, are there other like-minded dads uh, out there that are searching for some way to connect to their daughters? And uh, I think it was evidence tonight that uh, they are. And uh, this was a great outlet uh, for them to take some time uh, and enjoy one another's company and hopefully come away with some ideas uh, to strengthen their relationship. The night included encouragement to the dads and a challenge to the daughters. 19-year-old musician Hannah Beck encouraged the girls in the audience to embrace their God-given purpose and reminded the men of their ability to help those girls find that purpose. More than 160 attended the first time event in the Fogel Center in Lipsick. I just think it's important that we can spend that time with our kids and to be in an environment like this where we make uh, the, the scripture important and being a daddy and raising our daughters to follow him. I liked being with my dad, um, um, listening to Hannah Beck sing and um, pretty much every day. I think it's important for dads to uh, treat their daughters special so they understand um, the love of Christ and how they should be treated as they go through their lives. Oh, I love it. I will definitely do this again next year. One of the most emotional moments of the night involved writing a letter. Fathers wrote to their daughters. Daughters wrote to their dads. They were sealed and addressed. And over the course of the next year, those same letters will be mailed to their rightful recipients. Something organizer Adam Cup says, without a doubt, will create a lasting impression. I think that they, they provide uh, those memories uh, that so often dads and daughters don't have. Uh, with, with, with the speed at which we all live today and everything is, is right now and, and on to the next thing, uh, it was an opportunity to pause. 
Uh, I, I asked another dad sitting at the table with me tonight, when was the last time you hand wrote a letter? Uh, and as you can imagine, he chuckled and said, oh, it's been quite some time. You know, when was the last time we addressed an envelope? And so, you know, you find yourself sitting and, and doing some of these things that we take for granted and, and that in some cases we don't do anymore. And, and when it's to someone we love and to someone we care about, it just makes it all that much more special. In a fast-paced society that too often sends family members in opposite directions, this one-night event was designed to do just the opposite, bring them together, unified as a family, just as God intended when he created them. Really a special evening, a lot of fun to see daughters yeah. and dads connect and to especially taste that chocolate fountain. <laughs> yeah, I know you, really good. you and your, your daughter love the punch. <laughs> I think she was on her 35th. She loves uh, punch. Glass of punch. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Very neat to see uh, dads and their daughters and just investing in their daughter's life, mm. an important event. You know, everyone has influence of some kind or another. The question is, how will you use that influence? Mm. Well, Liberty Benton's Aaron Kraft, the Ohio State grad, returned to the area recently to exhibit his level of influence. Kraft helped lead Santa Cruz to a game one victory, or game one victory in the NBA D-League Finals at Fort Wayne. And then he went on to win the league title a couple of nights later in California. Well, plenty of Kraft's family and friends made the short trip west to Indiana, and he did not disappoint on the court during the game or afterwards off the court in an autograph session. As Kraft continues to grow as a player, a person, and a Christian, Mark has more in today's OAO Faith on the Field segment. The life of a professional athlete, particularly those in the minor leagues, is far from glamorous. But Aaron Kraft is pleased with how his rookie season in the NBA's developmental league has gone. I mean, it's, it's a grind, uh, and that's, it's, I think the biggest thing comes from, you know, I came from Ohio State, so they spoil us like crazy there, and, um, but at the end of the day, we still get to play basketball, and um, whatever excuses or, or problems we think we may have, we still have a great Personally, you know, we're in Santa Cruz, California, where it's sunny all year round. I have no complaints. It's been a great time. Yeah, you know, I think it's just being a professional. Obviously, this is the most games I've ever played in this, in the, this amount of time in this stretch. So um, that's an adjustment. Um, the different rules, the different spacing, the, obviously the longer three-point line. Um, and it's just been a continued growing process for me, and I have no complaints. You know, I've, I feel like I've improved this year, and I think it shows on the foot. And Kraft admits the grind has gotten to him and it is faith that has sustained him. It's grown, it's, it's, it's amazing how much it's grown. Um, early on in the season, you know, mid-January, it was struggling, uh, and struggling with a lot of things that, you know, you don't really think you have to, you don't, ha you're very blind to those things in yourself. So for me, it was really eye-opening to see these, these character traits and these, these problems that I didn't think I had, but I definitely did. So um, it's been an eye-opening and growing process and still haven't made it, but uh, very thankful for this for this opportunity that, that's helped me become a better person. The year in Santa Cruz has allowed a little bit of an extended honeymoon for Kraft and his high school sweetheart, the former Amanda Peterson, who got married last August. It's, it's great. Uh, the biggest challenge right now, obviously, we're, we, you know, we're in California, we're away from everyone we know, and that's even been a blessing in disguise. It's, it's really kind of helped us to hone in on just us two and, and really establishing us as, as a family. So that, it's been fantastic, and we've loved every second of it. Liberty Benton's Pound Squad certainly represented in Fort Wayne for Game 1 of the NBA D-League Series, but seeing Buckeye Nation throughout the NBA's D-League is nothing new. Uh, it's, it's amazing, uh, and it's very easy to take for granted. Uh, and throughout the D-League, you play in a bunch of smaller cities that you wouldn't really expect to see people, but there are Ohio State fans at every game that we've played at on the road in Santa Cruz, uh, and that's something that, that I really appreciate. Uh, and obviously, Buckeye Nation is, is unbelievable, and to be able to continue to represent them is something I'll never take for granted. I, I, I can't say enough about the kid. I could sit here and talk to you about, about Aaron Kraft for three hours. Um, it's been an absolute honor to coach him, and uh, it's been a lot of fun to be able to have at least a small thumbprint on what's going to be a long career for him. Well, thank you, Mark. It's now time to talk food. And with Memorial Day coming in just a few weeks, we're offering you a simple yet patriotic idea that you can serve to family and friends. Today's Lost Creek Care Center food segment involves just three simple ingredients. They're Andy's favorites. I really like these three <laughs> ingredients. Maybe a little whipped cream would spice it up. but This is exactly. very simple. What we're doing is we've got three fruits. Can you guys identify those? A guava, <laughs> pear, 
<laughs> and squash. Blackberries? Close, very close. <laughs> <laughs> looks like strawberries, you know, kind of looks like a guaraní strawberry. That's right. Two types of berries? Blueberries, which okay. I guess blackberries, that was kind of close. He's just not. In New Jersey, they do their colors different. <laughs> yeah. And then there's <laughs> banana there on the end. And so what we're going to do, if you guys haven't identified it by now, these are our patriotic colors, red, white, and blue. How about that? Yeah. We live in America. And so <laughs> what we're going to do is we have some skewers here. And we are actually going to make some kebabs, fruit kebabs, and then we're going to shape them in the shape of an American we're flag. Oh, well, we're not going to shape the kebabs. No, we're going to lay them down and create an American flag out of that. So we got it started here. You will need these kebabs. Yes, we do have it started. Just so you can start to get an idea. And what we have? We're missing the Midwest. We have our, of course, red and white stripes that are going on, and then this will be our blue up here. And so we'll make a few more kebabs and see where we land. You want to start with red, Andy? <laughs> oh, yes. So we should remind you that Thank there you. are 13 stripes total. Representing what, Zach? <laughs> Representing the 13 colonies. Can you name them? Seven red, six white is what we're shooting for. So yeah, you'll want to start with the strawberries. We need Mark for some history on this. Yeah, he would he be probably, great for this. Mark, yeah, he oh, would. Lost strawberry. He's probably made many fruit kebab flags <laughs> in his day. So. <laughs> I think that's a safe assumption. <laughs> I might help you out here. Does it matter if I do the strawberry up or down? No, and you know, this is really a chance for you to be creative. Maybe you have kids at home. <laughs> And you just want to do a fun project and teach them, remind them about the uh, flag. That's a good idea. You know, this is a great way to do it. And of course, you get to eat it in the end. And it's also healthy. You were saying that you like fruit, Andy. I do like fruit. Yeah. Smoothies and. Or you can eat it as you go. Anything. That's what I've been. By doing. itself. Blueberries are the best, though. That's my favorite berry. I like rasp, blue, straw, <laughs> black. I'm going to put some blueberries on here and create the blue. You get the good part, huh? Part. Yes, blueberries oh, I are. You'd gone two red in a row there, Matt. No, You're, no, there's was, a little banana got, in there. You do have two white stripes. I got two in a bananas row. in a row. Oh, there are two bananas. Yeah. <laughs> and the bananas are slippery there. A little it's bit hard. confused. I'm not trying to touch every banana. One so snuck in there, huh? Yeah. Those bananas. And we did discover something earlier. Ah! Our <laughs> bananas. Stab myself with trying so hard not to do that. Be careful. They're really sharp. They're sharp there. At the I didn't top. expect that. Our bananas two, that three, we're four, using five. actually weren't quite fully ripe yet, but we discovered that actually makes it a little bit easier if you can stomach not ripe bananas because they go in the the skewer that much better. They're not as sloppy as you might. It's kind of hard to get 13 layers on this. Thing. It is. These are. Yeah, I have. So that's another tip efficient. for you. The longer One, the two, skewers, three, the better, four, because five, these six. are a bit short. And so. Let's get two let's more here. How did I do? It looks yeah, looks good. You, so you can lay it down no, there. That's only six. Oh. Six red. But that's all I got. I mean, okay. we're out of room. That, that is the case we have right now. We have short skewers, and so we may not get the full stripes. I got them all on there. But we'll try <laughs> yeah, to. Good job, Andy. I squished That looks it. like a true kebab and right So there. if you put a few more uh, banana and red on there, we can finish out our flag, and we'll show the viewer. Don't <laughs> the eat food that hits the floor, <laughs> kids. Banana down. Dangerous. Salmonella. Salmon. <laughs> How many more? Uh, one yeah, more banana more. and one more strawberry, and we yeah. will call it complete. This is not going to be a. Uh, Are we going to get 50 blueberries in there? No. Oh. And so we'd like to see pictures of yours at home if you do this. Okay, so we'll raise this up just a little bit. That's this is going to be. Raise the flag! Very, very rough. You salute. You can see the blue up in the top left and our red and white stripes there celebrating Memorial Day. And we do want to take a moment and say thank you to all of those of you out there with either fi family members mm. or just if those of you have served in our armed forces now or in the past, we say thank you to you and God bless to you as we are all very grateful here at TV44. You certainly are. Without a doubt. Thank you for your service and your family's service as yes. well. So what do you guys think? That was fun. I love it. Yeah. Like it was so, good. Yeah. Sounds like yeah. a Memorial Day it. tradition on the way. Yeah. For the so. friends, every year we're going to make these. Maybe yeah. we will. I think that would be a good start to one. Well, we can finish it off. So while we're working on this edible work of art, we're going to move on to some other amazing examples of art now, courtesy of a recent art show including one unique style that involves kitchen utensils. Uh, Jennifer introduces us to New Knoxville artist Gary like Hovey. Like skewers? Be careful with those. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> For New Knoxville artist Gary Hovey, the silverware drawer takes on a different meaning. While paint palette, brushes, and oil pastels fit the creative needs for many others, this amazingly talented visionary uses forks, knives, and spoons as his medium, combining his knowledge of welding to create a unique, amazing, and always one-of-a-kind artistic opportunity. When I was uh, much younger, I was uh, just dating my wife at the time, and we went to a show in, in uh, Wichita, Kansas, that had uh, a guy made 
animals out of bumper ends, chrome bumper ends. And I, th I thought at the time, somebody made them out of spoons that could have indoor sculptures. So I, I, I didn't know how to weld at the time, but I told Tony about the idea. 30 years later, I, I decided to try it because I had learned how to weld by that time. And, and I remembered I had this idea, and I went back to it, and I built and made a dog, and I just kept making animals out of the flatware. Those animals include a rooster, a beaver, and many, many more. It takes Javi several weeks to complete one of these amazing designs. How many utensils? Well, let's just say plenty. Well, my dad, he's recently passed away, but he, he used to send me flatware that he'd go to garage sales and, and, and uh, flea markets, and they, they knew him by name, and he, he would send them into me flat rate boxes, and he, he sent me over a ton of flatware. If I, if I was better at something else with clay, I'd probably do clay, but I, I got a knack for the welding, and, and it's almost like a puzzle piece to look at something and say, what, what, would, what would a fork or spoon look better in that position? So it's kind of like a puzzle, too, and I enjoy doing those. So. Uh, I enjoy trying to put an attitude in them. Like if I get if I get the, the animal to not just look like an animal, but look like an animal that's that's a little sassy. I like I like doing that. Javi is one of several artists whose work is available at Brief Fresh Home Decor and More in Sydney, Ohio, owned and operated by Rex and Deanna Steineker. We are featuring local artists. Um, we have 30 in our location. Um, inspired by, which is the Creative Arts Center, which is where we're at tonight. They opened up about two months ago, and we decided that we wanted to feature some of our um, artists here. So we handpicked about 10 of our artists from blown glass, pottery, and canvas work, and we decided to host a show for them here. Many items on display at this special event painted a clear picture of the artist's faith, something Steenaker says follows right in line with the mission of her shop. Art just speaks to the soul, and it is a great, um, it's a great connection between a conversation. So when someone really expresses interest in a piece, it gives us the opportunity just to open that door and talk to them about their faith and give them um, an opportunity to ask questions. So actually, Refresh um, was named because it is from the living water. And not only do we want people to come to our shop and, and um, refresh their home and re refresh their decor, but also just have a place where they can come and have, have prayer, we pray with them, um, where they can come and just have some hope um, and, and make connections with other people. Really phenomenal. His ability, the artistic ability, uh, that entire art show over well was really neat. Lots of Christian artists there and really thankful to uh, Deanna Steeniker and her husband for hosting and also for the, uh, the, sh the, the ministry that they have in their own store down in Sydney doing some great things. Yeah, I mean, it? further proof that uh, we all have gifts and God has a way of using those gifts that maybe even we can't recognize ourselves, but God has a way of using us. Absolutely. Well, we have some important programming information that many of you likely have interest in hearing. After several weeks without his program, we are pleased to announce John Hagee is back on TV44, effective May 4th this week. You can watch John Hagee Mondays through Fridays at 7 p.m. as well as Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. Now, Faith and Friends previously aired on Mondays at 7, but you can now catch us Monday night at 8.30 right after Andy Griffith. And when it comes to John Hagee, we want to say thank you for your thoughts and your comments these past few weeks, letting us know just how important this program is to you. We certainly appreciate your patience as we work to find an alternate method of receiving the program after the satellite source was lost. Like most of the programs on TV44, John Hagee Ministries does not pay for its airtime. We ask you to keep our financial needs in prayer as we prepare for the summer season, which traditionally means a decline in financial giving. Now, your financial support aids in airing programs like John Hagee Ministries, making those possible. That alone gives us reason to say thank you. Your support during the Spring to Life campaign has been not just encouraging, but an incredible blessing. Listen to this, Zach. More than 375 individuals, wow. families, churches, businesses have partnered with us since just March the 6th. Together, donated more than $60,000. We thank you so much for being a part. Yes, we do, and we do want to read some names here in a moment. As the Spring to Life campaign continues through May 11th, 
and 100% of your financial contributions are used to support the mission of TV44. Jennifer, do we have some names? We are, and you know what's really, really neat, guys, is a lot of these things that I'm holding right here are brand new donors. Hmm. We, are, oh, wow. we are appreciative, we're appreciative of all of you. Longtime donors, you know, some of you have been supporting us for 30 years That's now, incredible. but a lot of names here that are brand new. Uh, this is Wilma Baumgarter, ba Bombar. I'm so sorry I messed up your last <laughs> name, but thank you so much. Um, the Overleys in Lima, Simpsons in Cecil, Hammonds in Delphus. Some of these are new, some of them are not, but here's another brand new donor. Uh, Penny uh, gave us a great donation. So thankful for TV44. Penny, we're so thankful for you <laughs> as well. Yes, we certainly are. And you know, you can donate online at WTLW.com. You can also do it by mail or over the phone, or you can contact us to learn more about automatic monthly withdrawal, a very convenient way to give monthly to TV44. Another opportunity is to donate to TV44 <laughs> through our annual auction. And donations Yay. are already being accepted. <laughs> As we have some fine china there that you're <laughs> This is <laughs> not <showing>. fine china. <laughs> Do you know what this is? When I saw it's this. It's a giant thimble. When I saw this come in. <laughs> no, it it's five like, giant I was, thimbles. <laughs> I, was, I was instantly taken back to my childhood of when my mother would hook up her, the salad master? her thing just like this and we would cut tomatoes and we would cut things and you know I, honestly this may end up being in the boutique at our auction but still this is just an example of how you can find a little bit of everything here <laughs> i don't know if it'll make it to the auction you've yeah. got your eye on yeah. the we got the thimbles. Is it a hat? Are there, are there just <laughs> instructions on how to use this classic salad master maybe, maybe we'll have to do a food segment From on Waterloo, how to do it Indiana. <laughs> i'm sure zach knows well, I'm, I'm mesmerized by the thimbles. You know, I've also unloaded a few auction items in the past I couple weeks. I hope you don't get any lice or anything by putting those on your head. <laughs> I won't get lice. This is very important. Ah! But anyway, Thank you three. to whoever donated this. Please do not think we're making fun of the donations. <laughs> no, we are it's awesome. appreciative for everything. But additionally, we've had some furniture donations. I know one gentleman has plans to actually hand craft some furniture for the auction. So a, a vast variety of all, just all kinds of things you can find at the TV44 auction. So we encourage you to keep that in mind. In fact, Zach, in just this past week alone, people have donated furniture, mirrors, paintings, kitchen items, and so much more. It, it's spring cleaning time, mm -hmm. and TV44 is a great place to repurpose your gently used items. Now this is new. This one's not used. This is from Uncommon Right. Uncommon Supplies Jewelry. Oh. Yeah, who knew that even something like a simple serving tray could be yeah. used to glorify Christ? And Sorry. it's very summery. It's a very, very summery serving. <laughs> I am. This is this is, you know, just we also have this amazingly beautiful grandfather clock oh. handcrafted that I arrived. Seen that yet. Uh, we have historic furniture already already have yeah. a lot of things and yes we have this really nice fancy beautiful <laughs> serving tray that's that's lemonade on that lemonade and ice yes, tea it does. on a cool summer evening that's yeah. right maybe we'll have to enjoy some later you can give us a call at 419-339-4444 to learn all kinds more about the auction and donating you can also stop by here at tv44 1844 Beatty road in lima monday through friday between 10 and 4 p.m and plan now to attend the 2015 TV44 auction. It may be in the fall, but it's going to come fast. That's September 12th of 2015. Would you like me to take that? <laughs> Being a little loud. <laughs> Here's one more thimble. Oh, thank you. Now, were those extra props from the Wizard of Oz? I think those are the Tin Man's hats. <laughs> All kinds of things. One was a you know, if we, if, what if we auction them off as the Tin Man's hats? I wonder. Movie if, memorabilia. That'll be a whole new way for the auction yeah. to go. And Zach Honesty. will sign them. Honesty is important here. <laughs> Are you insinuating that I played a Munchkin in the Wizard of Oz? No, the Tin Man. Or, well. <laughs> well, before we go, we want to take a moment to lift up our prayer needs. We're going to start with Zach the Munchkin. Actually, no. Serious, on a serious note, you know, every week we do gather the prayer requests that you present to mm -hmm. us through email, mm -hmm. through mail, through our prayer line. And, uh, you know, Zach, what have been some of our most recent requests? Well, there's been many health-related requests, specifically one viewer asking for healing for her husband, granddaughter, and another requesting healing for a son. Uh, one woman is praying for a better job for her husband and several requests this week regarding family situations and children going from parent to parent after mm -hmm. situations of divorce. But there's also praise reports, a praise report for relief from allergies. Wow. I can relate to that one, certainly. After 30 years of suffering, finally feeling some relief. Okay, I haven't been able to relate to 30 years of allergy suffering, suffering so praise God for that one. But spring allergies and mm -hmm. 
This sounds more serious. But anyway, <laughs> we're thankful for all your praise, and we do pray over all those prayer requests. Andy, would you pray right now for some of those requests that we've received? No question. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you that you are the great physician. Uh, you heal us. You do step in and take away these maladies, and we pray that you would do that for so many of these folks. Um, but ultimately, we pray you would draw hearts closer to you, that they would rely on you during the hardship, and that they would come through it uh, with a greater faith. We thank you that you are the God of the universe, and you can change whatever you want. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, you can reach us anytime with prayer requests, 24-7 through email at prayer at WTLW.com, or you can use our prayer line phone number at 419-339-3000. It's staffed by volunteers during daytime hours. If you get the voicemail, we do listen to all the messages as soon as they are received. You may send us your prayer requests. Every single one of them is prayed for. Let's take one final look at our scripture verse before we close for today as we look at Psalms 127 verses 3 through 5. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. Certainly a reminder to, to be a blessing to our parents, to be those quivers in the arrow, the, the arrows in the quiver of God to, to be used as we've seen being used many different ways this past week on uh, Daddy, Daughter, Date mm -hmm. Night, a wonderful story about the artist in New Knoxville. Certainly want to thank you for joining us today on Faith and Friends. <laughs>